uh, getting ready to car all ready for the Trans Am National. It will Trans Am ride. It's just a little bit uh, dirty from sitting in the old workshop here, but uh, got this this weekend. So I hope the guys, you guys, show up out there too, just the same. Of course, Ed's gonna be doing a little Q and A here with me today because I'm busy getting this thing cleaned up. So I don't have quite enough time to do a normal video. So uh, stick with me. I want to answer your questions that you've been asking me. This may be a more creative way to answer questions and take care of two things at one time or kill two birds with one stone. I'm not sure if I want to kill any birds or not though. But anyway, hey, what's what's the first question that we got some more from our viewers there? What size of screws do you use for attaching body panels? Uh, okay, good one. I actually do that for all the stuff I'm working on. All the body panels, it's actually called like a number 10 screw with a 5 16th head on it. Uh, and that's what I use to put all the body panels together to test them. So pretty good question because I always kind of forget to say that in the video. So sorry about that. So I got it this time. What's the next one? Would changing out the push rod to a shorter or longer one help the with the issue of a soft pedal? Oh my goodness. That's a tough question. That was kind of a, a big one. Um, I guess I know obviously that I think that was video question was tied to the disc brake upgrade now it depends on did you change the master cylinder was the pellet mushy before there's a lot of variables in that question to make it kind of tough but the thing to keep in mind i tell my co-workers this too we are typically our own worst enemies if it wasn't doing it before it's something you've done it could be air in the master cylinder but typically changing the push rod length uh, unless it's got a whole bunch of pedal free play isn't the answer so really can't get you an exact answer but retrace your steps so What's the next one there, Ed? Will a 1967 Firebird hood latch on, work on a 1968 Firebird? Hmm. Well, the answer, what I understand, is no. 1967 is a one-year-only hood latch. Uh, it doesn't have a safety catch on it, is what I've been told, but still working on improving that one. But I do know when you go to buy a reproduction 400 hood, the hood, uh, I guess it's a little footnote on the bottom, that says, must upgrade to a 68 Hood latch on a 67 to make the hood to work so i'm gonna have to say there is something different about it so no probably not interchangeable these are pretty good questions you guys are gonna try to stump me today <laughs> all right how more you got L three, five more five more oh yeah. my gosh on well, the car's gonna be shiny clean by the time we're now what's the next one would it be worthwhile for me to change the fuel pump on my 2006 Subaru Outback because I'm having stalling issues and stumbling when engine's running? Oh my goodness. See, this isn't even a firebird question, but it doesn't, it still relates to our channel. Anything automotive or two car garage, I did a Subaru fuel pump a long time ago, but I guess it's one of those things in the video, super easy to change. You're not wholly expensive. And if you've already done everything else, if you have no way to check fuel pressure or as a guest, I'm saying it probably wouldn't hurt, but uh, I hate that. Not to have to say a guaranteed answer for you, but I think if it was me, I might try that if I was in a situation like I was with that car. Uh, what's the next one? Um, What's the best way to start the process of putting on a convertible soft top oh, oh, oh man <laughs> um this car here in particular um best thing to do is make sure the top folds and moves correctly first get all the measurements of the distance of all the bows because you will have to reposition it back that way when putting it back together there is no spec book for the positioning of those bows so if the top works now put it back the way that it was that's probably the biggest thing when starting on that on that peel off the layers and then some point I plan to do a video replacing another convertible top. So hopefully they'll answer the rest of your questions when I do that. But the biggest thing is take measurements. So. <clears throat> now what do you got? Keep if forgetting I... where I was at. Do be easy asking questions. I'm gonna mess up my watch job here. <laughs> Alright, what do you have? If I have three engines right now from three different firewoods all the same year and I'm wanting to combine them. What is something that I should do, or will it hurt the value of the other two engines? Uh, I mean, they're all the same. Pony X stuff's all interchange between all the sizes, 326 to 455 for the most part. Um, so swapping the parts around wouldn't change the value a whole lot. It's more or less maybe will it work or run, or what's the best option. I guess if you get the numbers matching block, correct date coded heads, and you mix it up and make it an original looking engine, I'd probably do that, but hurting the value, it depends. 
is it a Ram Air 4 car yeah. or just a 350? So, all right, well, I guess uh, I can't answer that 100%, but if you're going to try to make an original date coded or back to original as possible, I'd mix up parts all the time. Works out good. For 350 right now, but we'll have 455 fit in there. I think so. The question is, it's a 350 engine right now. Can I put a 455 in my car? I bet you that's what they're trying to say, but that makes sense. Oh, here's a great thing about Pontiac. Um, for the most part, um, all the engines are 100% interchangeable. 326, 455, drop right in, use the same exhaust, use the same accessories. It is a direct bolt and no major modifications required. I want to say a little disclaimer is the later, later, later engine blocks, they stop putting all the holes in the side of the block. You go from a, I think it's like a three hole to a five hole to a two or I think actually it's two, five or three. So depending on the year of the block, for the most part, direct bolt in interchange, no problem at all. I am interested in buying a 68 or a 69 Firebird. However, I am worried that things are just way too overpriced right now. Do you um, know of any cars for sale? Yeah, no, not really. Uh, there's always stuff popping up on the internet. Here's the best thing you know, before buying any of that stuff, get it inspected before you buy it. Don't send money until you've seen the car in person or find out it's a legit deal. Um, I guess you say protect yourself from buying these old cars or get educated beforehand is the best I got to say. But as for finding these treasures, it's just hit or miss or sometimes just luck. So, is that the last one? Yeah. Well, that wasn't too bad. Well, anyway. I'm not doing a great job of washing. Obviously, I'm clearly very distracted. And so is my camera person now. It seems to kind of fall into the side. But that's okay. We're going to see you guys at the Trans Am National. Sorry, this won't be the normal video I normally do, but I hope I answer a few of your questions. And I may do something like this again. This is kind of throwing out there. Man, I won't be washing the car, but maybe do the Q&A on the camera. So that way I don't guess, I guess I have to do all the keyboard warrior stuff here, type that stuff in there. But nonetheless, hope to see you guys this weekend in Ohio. I'm going to bring the Trans Marado. The crew. Hi, Ed. Right, Ed. Say hi. Hi. And she's going to be there. So is Jay and the, uh, the producer, Whitney. She's going to be there to help us out. So I hope to see you guys there. Drive safely. And you guys have a great week. And if I don't see you, and when I get back, we'll go back to playing cars in the garage. So hope to see you guys there. See you next time.